And I do this and I do that. And that's what we do. Come on now. Then you got the publican, that little sinner man over there that bowed his head. He said, Lord, he, kept, so he, went, he said he didn't even feel worthy to lift his eyes. He said, Lord, forgive me, I'm just a sinner. Then you got Jesus that said he's going to separate the sheep from the goat. Sheep won't eat nothing but green grass and they like clean water, praise God. And they said, my sheep will know my voice. But a goat, I believe they need a little can, you throw it out there enough. And they like to bump heads. Are y'all catching my drift now? We can't be robbing God of his glory. If they see any good thing in you, you better give God the glory. And praise God, if there's good things happening in your life, give him thanks. If you're going through a hard time, give him thanks. Because he promised you. He said, I'll go before you and I'll be your real reward. I'm going to go with you even unto the end. And he said, every tongue that shall rise up against you, thou shalt condemn. How are you going to do that with the life you live? Praise God, everything that you live. Jesus, that is so the way we have thought about. Man, we don't know what persecution is. We walk around with, praise God, a chip on our shoulder. We let our little feelings get hurt. And we'll walk around for days. Man, but that one's that hurt my feelings. But I'm going to tell you something. Get over it. Praise God. You ain't above your Savior. Look what he had to go through, praise God. When you got a little bit of that, we're like Paul. He said, let me boast a minute. He said, y'all want to boast? He said, let me boast a little bit. Praise God. He said, I've been beat twice. Praise God for the glory of God. I was shipwrecked about in the middle of the ocean for 14 days, floating in the ocean. And we want to talk about persecuting because somebody hurt our feelings. Come on now. Paul said, I do therefore exercise my conscience for it of offense. How can we ever walk in the peace and the love and the joy of the Holy Ghost if all we worry about is what everybody else thinks? Amen. Only one we need to be worried about is Jesus. Amen. Be confident in what He promised you. The Bible tells me, even Jesus Himself in the book of Hebrews, He said for the joy that was set before Him, He endured the shame in the cross and He went on. As He know when it was time. When He was hanging up on that cross, He said He was finished. He said not one John or one tell in Matthew. At the beginning, the way for this fish, he said, I want you to be taken away from the law until I'll be fulfilled. But let me tell you something. That day when he looked up and he said, Father, I can, I can move you my spirit. He was finished. That day, that's when the earth quakes. And he rent, he rent the, the holiest of holies. He rent that veil, praise God. And he made it possible we could come to him come to Him boldly to the throne of grace, praise God. And He gave us that opportunity that way that, hey, I don't have to go talk to a priest behind the curtain and tell him. Now the Bible does tell us to confess your thoughts one toward another, but I ain't got to go to no Catholic priest, praise God, and ask Him for my forgiveness. Will you tell Jesus I did this? Will you tell Him I did that? And all this other junk that's been talking, I'm telling you, the only one we need to be talking to is the one that told us to believe in His Son. That's what it's about. We walk around hurt, and depressed, and mad, and angry, and just upset all the time. How in the world are we ever going to bear fruits of the Spirit? You can't. What was Jesus talking about? Well, if you got a bitter spirit, praise God, and you're hateful, and you're bitter, and you're angry, and you're constantly snappy, you men got the grapes of the orange and figs of thistles. The Bible said those kind are going to be cast into the fire. Are you hearing what I'm telling you? Oh, when people talk to you, but they get a humble, meek spirit because the Bible says if you have no spirit of Christ, you know it is. I don't care how much you go to church. I don't care how much money you put in the offering plate. I don't care how much you profess God. If you bitter and you hold grudges and you got hate in your heart and you want to throw your hand up like you praise God, you keep on doing that. Satan loves it. Because you're going to find him. You ain't going to find the one that's really saved you. He said in the end he would deceive the very next, but possibly Jesus told us it was going to happen. Amen. Get that bitterness out of your heart. Forgive your neighbors. I'm going to tell you, I'll give you an example. I had a man for years. He was one of my best friends, I thought. Paid into his ministry. Kept him up. And we was doing, doing things. God, oh God. But I was persuaded. I was okay. Because I told y'all earlier, I was more than God. I wasn't God no more. I really had confidence in this individual. That was my first mistake. I put confidence in me. I ain't saying that my faith in the brothers and sisters. Man. You gotta have one another. We found out we're sitting ourselves together as the same dudes as people says. Don't misinterpret what I'm saying. We got to have one another. It's important. Amen. Go put your faith in Jesus. Amen. But I had a guy that led me for eight years. He came in, I was like a puppet on the street. 
casting me out, throwing me out to the bed. She didn't spit me out to the dogs over the dog. I quit paying tithing. Quit doing this thing. I'm not knocking them. I'm not slandering them in. I'm going to tell you how God can show you. Through this incident, he put, a, he put a bitterness in my heart. He caused the anger to rise up in me to the point that I caught myself reading the satanic Bible because I wanted to know the devil because I thought I had made him at this point. And I read this trash. Don't go against the good boys. I'm going to get the good boys. I'm going to get the good boys. I'm going to get the good boys. Let me tell you something. I got that bad. And I told myself, I said, if I ain't run into him, be a witness for this. I said, when I catch him, I wouldn't, I wouldn't leave him for the Lord did. And I said, when I run into him, I'm going to kill him. I'm going to cut his tongue out of his head. He won't receive another man. So it's hate. I let the devil build up in me. I dwell on them thoughts. I dwell on all that day. Me grudges. And it seemed like he wouldn't just kill me like every time I turned around. Because when I walked away from God, the devil stepped in. More spirits. Seven more spirits more wicked than the last. Jesus wasn't playing when he made that comment. Yeah. You better take heed to what I'm telling you. Or what Jesus said. He said, when he leaves that house and he's swept and gone, he said, he's going to come back and seven spirits more wicked than the last. Let me tell you something. That's exactly what happened to me. But I came to my senses. And I had to go to this man. God made a way for it to happen. I'd run into him. I'd run into him twice. He came back to Georgia the first time. I wanted to. But I wouldn't let me. He had pains. It's like God had my hands down. The things I wanted to say, I've been holding, I've been waiting for four years. He do it. The next time I saw the man, I got right to Jesus. I, I, I had a little talk with Jesus. Just a little talk with Jesus. <laughs> And they praise God, you know what? I got to hug his neck. And I suffered myself. Like Paul said to do. I told him I love him. Asked his forgiveness. He forgave him. And I felt a yoke break off my neck. I felt it. I don't know if any gives us felt that. And I hope to God you get the experience of you. But I'm telling you, when that yoke broke, I ain't been the same since. I've had the Holy Ghost dealing with me. And I've gone to people. I'm looking, I'm like, Lord, it's that easy. All I got to do is just forgive. And I can have peace again. Because when, when the peace leaves your heart, I'm telling you, drugs ain't going to fix it. Alcohol ain't going to fix it. Sex ain't going to fix it. Food ain't going to fix it. Facebook ain't going to fix it. Nothing in this world is going to fix Because Jesus said, I give you a peace, not as the world gives, but the peace I give unto you. He'll give you a peace, praise God, that goes far above anything your minds can comprehend. And he tell, he'll put something in you. It don't matter if the world's burning down around you. Just like Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. Praise God, when they was in the fire, they said when they come out, they didn't even smell like smoke. And not one hour was singed. Praise God, this is the God that you serve. He's the same yesterday, today, and forever. And He walks with you and around you. And everything that you're going through, He's right beside you. Rebuking every demon if your eyes could be open. And you could only see the demons attacking you. But you got more angels, I guarantee you, than your mind can comprehend. Fighting against them spirits. The Bible says we wrestle not with flesh and blood, but with principalities and powers. But your God is greater than our God. I'm telling you, there ain't nothing you've done. There's no way you've been. You've not said something too bad to God. I'm able to forgive you. As your brother said earlier, his hand is stretched out still. It's not too short that he can't save you. He's a waiting on us. God's talking to somebody tonight. Don't leave his tent tonight hopeless and alone. Because God wants to rebuild your character. Because when you come to the altar, you got to remember one thing. Though you're new, He said He throws your sins as far as east is to the west. I want everybody to stick your hands up just for a second. Can you measure how far it is from the east to the west? Can you? And He said He throws your way from windows in the moon. Ain't that something to think about? Then why in the world do we sit and dwell on what God did for us for? You see how the human mind, that's why he said in the Philippians in chapter 4, he said, think on these things, think holy. Amen. Anything that's just and pure, think on these things. Right. And several other things in that God, which were good thoughts. If you want a positive reaction in your life, you've got to have a positive good God. In order to have that positive good God, you need a positive God. You can't bring God down like you're on the corrupt man because you ain't. You find yourself in the wrong chapter one, church. I'm telling you. And it's easy to do. If Satan can get in your head, he'll work his way to your heart and he'll come out your mouth. And 
believe the story. Every time God's trying to establish in your life. And here's what happens. You'll find yourself establishing ways and laws and guidelines. Well, if I do this, God will be happy. Well, if I go over and do that, I'm like the little pat on the back. He said they have their reward. Don't be that type. But you'll find yourself creating standards and laws and things in your life that you think, well, if I do this, God will be pleased with me. And He'll bless me. Well, guess what? Them rules and laws that you're creating that God you're molding, when you let Him down, Satan slips in and says, I wish you got that now. For you know what condemnation is sitting in. Well, I done messed up. God don't love me no more. God hates me. No, Lord's never left me. No. He said, I'll never leave you but forsake you. Amen. Them times you think you're walking alone. Trust up. They say to the death, no power, no principality, no powers. I said, I'm persuaded. None of these things will separate me from the love of God. He said, for he has made us more than conquerors through Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. Are well, you understanding what I'm telling you? We can get excited and we can share Jesus again, once again in this same time. Because it's, it's coming, it's winding up. He said in Matthew 24, 25, I think it is, if you get to reading in them scriptures, he said there would be earthquakes in diverse places. There would be pestilences and famines. All these things are going on. There would be wars and rumors of wars. We see it all around us. But we seem to not care. Jesus looked at Peter's and the disciples, praise God, when he went to pray, he knew it was about his time. He told them several times, that my hour is not yet come. But he knew his time. He said, they're coming to get me tonight, boys. And I'm speaking in language terms. He said, pray with me for a little while. And Jesus walked out. He wouldn't pray right. Like, he wouldn't say, how long will he get back? And he was asleep. He said, boys, get up. I need you to pray with me. He walked off again. Then he came back. Y'all can't pray with me, not even an hour. How is it that we find ourselves we're living in such a fast-paced world? We got high-speed internet. We got fast food. We got prosthetic limbs. And we got we got glasses and hearing aids. Jesus didn't have all of that. When we was talking about John the Baptist, you know what? He didn't perform the first miracle before we already read John did. But the disciples did. That was all a shadow. So I'm going to explain something. That character that God's putting in you, when you speak to people, when He puts that new tongue in you, He said, he said when, you, when you come to God, if you're going to speak with new tongues, you sure will because He's going to take that filth out of your mouth. Praise God. He's going to put a pure heart in you. Amen. He said, I'm going to cleanse you from all your filthiness and all your idols in Ezekiel 36. And He said, I'm going to put, a, I'm going to put that old, take that old stony heart of yours out and I'm going to put a heart of flesh in you. Praise God. He's going to soften you up. Amen. And He's going to teach you how to love in a way that you didn't know how to love. And that love, praise God, that you begin to you share that with people. You're going to open the eyes of the blind. That revelation that God puts in you. You're going to help the deaf to hear the God they've been ignoring. You're going to help the lame to walk. Why? Because the double-minded man is unstable in all his ways, praise God. You're going to help blind him right back up. Think about what I'm saying. God wants to do that. He has a purpose for you. Jeremiah 29, 11 says, He's in my mind because I'm happy. He said, they're good thoughts, they're bad thoughts. Those of you didn't expect it either. They got something to find back. He said, you're going to utterly follow the eyes of Isaiah in your place. He said, he's going to lift you up. He said, he's going to rear you up on the wings of Eagles. He's going to give you strength. This is the God you serve. Or could be serving. If you don't know him, praise God. Now, he's inviting you right now. It's no coincidence. Every individual is sitting under his tent tonight, God ordained it for this very reason. Amen. Because he wants to give you a chance. Because let's face it, we ain't promised another breath. He owns a thousand cattle. He owns the hills and a thousand cows, praise God. The very best your breathing belongs to God. There ain't nothing you've done or accomplished. It ain't nothing in your power that it's happened. God has opened them doors. Amen. It belongs to God. Amen. Your very breath. So you take and consider what I'm saying. Be joyful in the Lord. The Bible said the kingdom of heaven cometh not by observation, but it dwells within you. Amen. Then Paul comes on preaching talking about in the kingdom, it's peace and love and joy of the Holy Ghost. Wait a minute. Did you hear that? Peace, love, and joy of the Holy Ghost. Why ain't we happy? Because the news upsets you. There's some bad things happening. God said it was going to. Why are we getting, why are we getting worried for it? Think about the children of Israel. We're talking about the same God here. Praise God, when the plagues hit Egypt, 
they were they were protected. They would nothing happened to them. Everything was going to, but the world was going down around them. But that was amazing. God said, "You got heads about you, people. He ain't changed. He's not a respect of persons." He said, "You believe in God, believe also in me. Believe in His word, and He will He will He will comfort you. He will give you strength in your weakest moments. He will give you a peace when you can't find peace. You'll sleep when you couldn't." You'll find yourself, that's why Paul said, that's why they're so sick and beggarly among us, because they ain't understanding that. It ain't quite clicked yet. But when it clicks and you begin to believe that, Satan immediately is going to try to kill him like a royal lion. He jerk that right out of you. Read the parables of the soil. When you read the parables of the soil, he said, some was thrown by the way, son. Some was thrown in stony ground, right? But some was thrown in good ground. Let yourself make the good ground. It's going to bring forth fruit. And remember another thing. God said, you didn't choose me. I chose you. That right there alone ought to make you shout happy. You didn't choose me. I chose you. Now check this out. When Peter then was out there in the water, praise God, he told me to throw you that out in the water. Now, now, now let's, let's get lost, Let's get a little earthy here for just a minute. Because I'm going to make a point. If was, I wonder how many fish is in the ocean. Well, we can count, guarantee you. Big and small ones, mean ones, nice ones, all kinds of people. We ain't like busy city people. Why don't you check this out? They throw that net out into the water. Now, all the fish in the sea, there's just a few in that net. And what happened? They carried the fish back to the ocean, and Jesus sitting and sitting there deep in the back. Many are called, but few are chosen. Are you hearing me? So, if God's calling you, you didn't choose him. He chose you. You better heed the call. He said, Behold, I stand at the door and knock. And he said, If you'll answer and let me in, I'll come in and sup with you, you and me. And he said, I'm going to take care of you. That's just the beginning. Paul said, Know you not that you're the temple of the Holy Ghost and the Spirit dwells within you? Have you laid him in yet? He said, They profess me with their mouth, but their hearts far from me. Have you really laid him in your heart? Have you really embodied Jesus in? I think at today's time, when you look at today's society and you look at the churches of today, shame on them. I think you would have a better, Jesus would have a better chance of a drunk letting him in their house than you would a church. And that's sad to say. Because you got a people out here today no different than they was in old days. Because if you pay real close attention, when you read any of the scriptures, it was the church that Jesus was rebuking. But it was the sinners he was reaching out to. The outcast. There was, there was 10 lepers got healed one time I read the scriptures. What did Jesus do? He didn't say don't sin no more. He didn't do that. He said, now I'm going to tell the priest. But check this out. <clears throat> One of them was a Samaritan. Uh oh. Just like the woman at the well. That woman at the well looked at Jesus and said, Why are you talking to me? The Jews had no dealings with the Samaritan. He said, If you knew who it was talking to you, honey. He said, You'd be asking me for one. One of them lepers was a Samaritan. He couldn't go to the priest. He was a Gentile. He was an outcast. He couldn't run to the church, praise God. Come on, think about what I'm saying. Come up here with me for a minute. He couldn't run to the priest. He wouldn't allow to. So what did he do? He go back to Jesus. Jesus said, wait a minute. What's done with that? Man's traditions have made God's way. Amen. You see how people are sick standing? John, does everything make you sense? I hope everybody's understanding. I want to lift everybody up today. What I'm saying is here, I'm trying to encourage everyone. We have got to see beyond. God is more than able to change this world around us. He said, well, one would send a thousand to fly, two would send ten thousand. We got a house full. We get just a few more. We could turn this nation upside down. Everybody's trusting the trunk, they trust him, and everybody knows the son of bitch things. I'm going to tell you something. Trump ain't nothing but another vessel. He ain't nothing but a human being. And he's full of the devil. I'm just saying, mm -hmm. just saying, he needs Jesus. And I hope he has a power experience. Because I've heard some prophets say that they prophesied that Trump was the one God sent. Mm -hmm. Well, if that's the case, he needs to work on that filthy mouth of his. Praise God, I'm going to tell you something. He needs a power experience. God smoked, he, he, when he got a hold of Paul in Damascus Road, praise God, he was persecuting Christians. He was, he was on his way probably to kill some, truth be known. And I'm just saying, now here's the thing. But what happened? God said, why are you kicking against the prince? I ain't saying Trump don't believe in God. I said, people pray with him. Maybe he does, maybe he don't. I don't know. I think he does. Because he seems sincere at first. 
and I might get the butter to chuck you 